Koto kete fakaro mai koto kiaro FM. Te reo irirangi o Wairarapa. That's right, your community access radio station. And here am I, blethering on the radio. But hey, this is weird. My desk's not doing anything. Um, it really isn't. I'm not getting any levels out of it. Are you there? Wow. Um, I'm just going to presume you can hear me that everything's all right. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll play a song. And then I can go outside and check. Lovely to be here with you this morning. Harry Watson will be joining me in a few moments and we can have a decent chat. Meanwhile, I've got um, off the Luaka Bop CD, which is um, David Byrne got a whole lot of really interesting people together. Um, and I've got a track called, it's written so small on here. Who's this? I just better check in case that somebody's saying, hey. <laughs> hey, that'll be better, won't it? <laughs> That's why I couldn't, I, I was going, I can't be heard. What's going on here? Well, my microphone was way over there. That was Toby who just uh, called me to tell me. Did I mention it's a pleasure to be here? Well, I hope you're feeling the same thing, because you never know. All right. Um, <laughs> Harry's going to be in in a bit. Um, let me tell you a few things that are happening in the region, but uh, I'd like to start by playing some of uh, the Luaka Bop CD, a track by Musa Dumbia called Kalea. Thank you. 
So that's a good thing, isn't it? Then you can hear me. Some of you may say that's not a good thing. But um, look, you will want to hear our guest. There's Harry. G'day, Harry. Hello. Hello. Thank you for inviting me on your show to talk about motorcycles. <laughs> Is that? Oh, no. <laughs> I thought it was going to be about art. <laughs> look, it's a pleasure. Uh, inviting you here because you have uh, been to your place and uh, your mm. gallery is mm. uh, apart from being dynamic and exciting and having good art in it it's cozy mm. yeah. so um harry this is the the first dealer gar- gallery in the white Rod upper is it uh as far as i'm aware it's the first one in masterton um and though it's based in masterton i do see it as a new zealand gallery and of course, the dynamics will be more concentrated locally and spread their way throughout New Zealand. Um, I have uh, a lot of interest from Auckland, Wellington, and Queenstown. So um, I'm a person of New Zealand. We're a gallery of New Zealand. Yes, well, the world, really. Mm, I have artists in Sydney. Do you really? Of all things. You mean you represent some Australian uh, artists? Or? Well, it's a work in progress. Yeah, I see. Yeah. So how does a dealer gallery work? Um, you, you are are you kind of like the agent for the artists, or you're more a place to exhibit and sell on behalf? Yeah, I, th- I think there are probably as many business models as there are businesses, and a lot of different types of galleries. A lot, a lot of the provincial galleries are a little bit like shops. Um, they have a, a wide range of artists in the same room. They often they they have labels which, to me, detract from the work. And that's the way they operate, and that's great. And everybody, a lot of people do need those mosaic pukekos, which are fine, and yes. and the the little watercolours of of the town square, which are great. But my particular business model is to represent artists that that their work um, is like nothing else. Mm. That's the main thing. If I see an artist's work and it could have been done by this person, that person and the other person, Mm. that's really not my area. No. So so we're talking about people that, that, that... have their own voice, you could say. Absolutely. Um, and speak directly to mm. people from who they are. But people are still influenced by other artists, right? Absolutely, yes. Yes. Um, I guess it's... It's the artists that, that work hard, perhaps hard to be original, uh, that I'm interested in. I know I, as an artist myself, I work extremely hard to be original, and it's not an easy thing. Um, yeah. And yeah, so we, as an artist, because so many people who, who uh, are not operating in that area yeah. might be a bit mystified, because you're not only talking about um, technical matters, how, mm. to, how, to, how to get your paint on the canvas, how to get your yeah. piece of wood turned into mm. what you see. Yeah. 
it's a blend of of personal expression and yeah. artistry, yeah. but also a, a kind of craft as well. Yeah, absolutely. And and technique has uh, less to do with it than it used to. Um, as if you've got great technique, you could do a portrait of your dog, for instance, and that would that would be lovely. That would be wonderful. But would it be would it be new? Would it be groundbreaking? Would it be unique? I don't think it would. Mm. But when some people who, you know, there are people who, who have attitudes towards especially more modern art, mm. and they go, oh, I could do that, or my dog could do that. Yeah. So, all right, you say the technique isn't perhaps as important, but there's still, uh, still skills and experience operating. It's not just, mm. hey, I'm just kind of chucking my mind at a canvas. Yes, absolutely, and I, I, I have I have uh, my own views on that too. Um, I don't have a huge respect for art that's where the artist hasn't done anything. Um, personally, my taste is I want to see the maker. I want to see the maker in the work, the painter, the carver. Um, I want to see it wrought by an individual, not just ordered, as it were. And there's a certain amount of that in the modern art world. It there makes is. me think of people like Jeff Koons, mm. uh, where, all right, you've got a vision, and then you you get a bunch of people to uh, make it on your behalf, mm. in a way, which I've always found a bit of a strange one. Yeah, yeah. Um, each to their own. I mean, uh, possibly there's a place for that. Uh, I, I like to slag it off myself, personally. <laughs> yeah. um, I heard a story of an artist who was represented in a show, he couldn't make it, he rang somebody up and said, can you dump some rubbish on the gallery floor, please? Yeah. And which was done. And um, I can't remember the exact circumstance, but people got in an uproar, and I thought, well, if you're getting in an uproar, you're actually just feeding, feeding that sort of mm. emperor's new clothes type art, in my humble opinion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, in a way, you could say it's just as valid to get somebody else to dump the stuff on the floor because you're making mm. a comment about yeah. about your uh, about society and the uh, the uh, outsourcing mm. of um, of work to other people. What about then? Uh, I mean, this this is this is a fraught area, and we've got to acknowledge it's all just mm. a matter of our own opinion. It is. But if when an installation is a light bulb. Uh, mm. Tricky stuff, eh? Yes, it is. Um, I've seen some lovely uh, um, installations, and I recently had one at my own gallery, actually. I was fortunate enough. Um, and that, that was entertaining. I think if some... I once saw a dance troupe, and um, they looked like they were dancing for themselves. Mm. They looked like they were having a great time, never mind the audience. And I think making art actually presupposes an audience and you have to respect your audience and put something out for them mm. um, yeah yeah I, I guess even if what you're putting out for them they might not think that they like that mm. but you're still making an effort you're acknowledging yeah. the fact that it's yeah. it's not just all about me yes yeah. exactly exactly mm. and you can sense that uh, there was a lovely uh, um, installation which um, but, but, which was just so fun, so fun. It was little speakers hanging from the ceiling, little, like, transistor radio speakers, and they all had different languages of um, people... People uh, th They were undergoing a UFO sighting, so they're driving through the country, yeah. and you, get, you got the story after a while. So some of them were in English and different accents. And it was just a, a, a dim room full of these speakers with this UFO event. Yeah. And you'd go from speaker to speaker listening to all these different languages and it was just beautiful. Mm. It was just wonderful. And that's that's what I call a really cool installation. Yeah. Um, I, having visited your gallery now, uh, w what great potential for installations there. Even though it's a, a relatively small environment, mm. there are different spaces. You've got yeah. one room that's like the size of your bathroom. Well, not even bathroom, your toilet. Mm. Yeah. You've done lovely things to show off the art there. Mm. Yeah, an installation, I guess the artist would uh, come and see the space first and uh, read it for what, for what it is, uh, preferably empty. Mm. Um, it's very light, um, but there's no direct sunlight, which makes it an ideal 
gallery space because uh, yeah. yeah it's not going to get bombarded by uv um and a wall of one wall of windows and three blanks and i've made a miniature gallery in the toilet and as to installation I th miniatures are lovely because you can put them just above the light switch you can put them in little places in your house where you don't expect yeah so you might you might bend down to to change a rubbish bag every now and again you put a little miniature down there to give you that reward in your own house and i see installation is like that not as something out there that's that nobody's going to understand or engage with um that's what i guess i resent about a lot of modern art is that uh, it sort of separates a lot of the audience away from it instead of bringing them in um i guess there's a there there is in many art forms not just not just uh visual art but mm. but um acting dance whatever there's there's still a, a a sense often that you know you've got to be an aficionado to mm. understand it yeah and there's nothing wrong i think with saying that the more you're exposed mm. the more you'll be open to yeah it. yeah you can learn a lot from the arts you can know a lot about the arts but um one thing a lot of people struggle with is they think they have to understand it and um to me in visual arts one of my main uh ethics is you do not have to understand the artwork you're looking at you do not have to know anything about it that it has to come from the heart you have to from the eyes to the intellect to the heart or from the eyes to the heart out the work should have something there for you otherwise pff, forget it yeah sometimes it, it can be almost from the eyes to the stomach uh, yes. i'm thinking i went and saw um went to the tate modern in mm -hmm. london and saw my first actual rothko right and i felt like something just went boom yes, inside well. me i felt like it was sucking me <laughs> yeah beaut beaut that's what um and i saw len lies grass i had that that same thing mm. i saw len lies grass and i heard his um the very loud one bang 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 in the in the old art gallery in wellington i saw len lies grass and i could actually saw a field of grass mm. it was just lovely i was good to see it I could see it in, in in my stomach yeah uh yeah so, and that was i was very young i must have been 17 and yeah. it had that profound an effect on me and all it was was a plank with a whole lot of wire sticking out of it turning slowly this rocking slowly like a seesaw it's funny isn't it you describe that to people and it would feed some people's kind of negative preconceptions about mm. oh, modern art a plank and yeah. things sometimes you see it mm. and, and then you go oh, i don't understand i still don't understand yeah but i get it yeah <laughs> exactly uh like picasso's bull's head which is a bicycle seat and bicycle handlebars mm. with the handlebars welded behind the seat and there's bull's head and it's fantastic yeah it is it's fantastic i mean why why does art need to be a complicated distant kind of intellectual exercise yeah i think some of the you know and again i'm just parading my own ignorance here mm. but some of the 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 aspects of some modern art that i don't like is is in a way where it is kind of all too obvious like the art mm. is saying this is a pun uh, oh yes this means yeah. that mm. and i go along and look at it and go well i could come up with 10 puns in a yeah. minute why am i why is this art thinking it's special mm. by doing that but again that's my preconception for other people they might find something more in that yeah uh, my own work uh, has been called quirky, and I do love using puns. Yeah, that's 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 the skin of the artwork. That's that's the veneer. Yeah, that's the front. But I I like to hope that there's more there. That I'm I'm trying to learn something by making that work too. Um, my work I'm working on at the moment is called Duck Fishy, which is avoid suspicion. Mm. Um, that's a kind of pun. But avoiding suspicion is something that I've experienced a lot of, perhaps in workplaces. Um, hmm. You don't want to take the blame for anything. 
and I was recently gifted a painting by Jason Burns, a wonderful artist who I represent, called Maybe I Was Wrong. And I've tried to tried to live by that in the, you know, the best way to avoid blame is, is to take the blame for something. If you've stuffed yes. something up, admit, you know, with all of your heart. So that's what I'm exploring right now. But that's a, that's still a pun. It's duck fishy. Avoid yeah. suspicion. Look, like puns. I'm I'm a big mm. fan of puns. I mean, mm. I had a, a lecturer at university who said to me once that um, the pun was at the heart of all good art, mm. uh, because it's one thing meaning yeah. another thing, which yeah. is fine. Mm. No, I think my my um, Achilles heel is really just the ones that appear to be one pun and nothing oh, else. Oh, yeah, one trick. Yeah, yeah, one trick. Yeah, I love what you said earlier about uh, art like as a little reward you know you bend down mm. which miniatures can be um what a neat idea that, that yeah. we're being rewarded yeah for a little bit of effort whether mm. in just turning up or bending down to pick up the rubbish yeah. or whatever i had a picture of a duck in a suit just on a little piece of paper just a um, very very lightweight sort of sketch thing and i mean it was in color it was I called, fondly called called it ducky and i i um just a little bit of blue tack and it went above the light switch in the gallery and the toilet in the gallery and every time i turned the light on it oh hello ducky yeah neat it was lovely and it, art art can be that it can be that it mm. can be um uh you can you can talk to it it's yeah. like your teddy bear <laughs> yeah. so what is art being in your gallery at the moment uh what who are you exhibiting I've uh, got Dale Anthony at the moment. He's um, an expert painter, like very, very skilled painter. Could paint anything, but he's also subversive. Um, so he... And he, he plays. He plays with the re Renaissance-quality painting and then he splashes, splashes around it. And it's... It, it, very difficult to explain. That's why. That's mm. why uh, it's best seen. Um, if I, if you go uh, to the gallery's website, you can see it, and that will tell you more than I can. I can do for mm. an hour. I can nothing. sit here for an hour, and you wouldn't, still wouldn't know. No, but nothing like turning up too, because you mm. can go. It's like as I say, when I, I've seen things in reproduction, but when I saw. I remember seeing my first Turner. Mm. I went, oh, wow. Yeah. You know, now I get it. I've seen yeah. them on glossy paper and things. Mm. But, so people need to turn up to your place. Where, where is it? Uh, 2 Perry Street, Marsterton, just across from the flight centre, just around the corner of, on, of Queen. Really close to here. Yeah. Very close, yeah. Just across the road, really. Yeah. Um, I'll just uh, actually take this opportunity to thank Creative New Zealand, which have given me a continuity grant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, is that because of the COVID thing? Yes, yeah. yeah. Um, a, a, a lot of um, artists were interrupted and shows were cancelled. I know artists whose mm. shows in Wellington just poof, yeah. gone. Yeah. Yeah, so um, Creative New Zealand have been great for that, for helping artists. Their, their grants, um, if you go to their website, you can see who's, who's um, got those grants, and I'm fortunate enough to be one of them. Yeah. Yeah. Grants are, uh, I know that people sometimes agonise about, well, well, how do you how do you decide who gets what and mm. uh, because art is subjective and all yeah. this, that. And I, I, somebody told me once that I think in the 50s in New York, mm -hmm. the, I don't know what body it was, the granting body anyway, mm. said, w we can't figure this out. Anybody who applies is going to get it. Oh, Mm. And out of that, you got Jackson Pollock and George O'Keefe and all sorts of wow. people, you know. Mm. And what a great policy. What a brave policy yeah. that is to say here. Mm. Because it's no skin. People get so terribly worried about outcomes and things, yeah. don't they? Yeah. If you put some sensible money into the arts, some people are going to be crap, mm. but a lot of good stuff is going to happen. Yeah. Yeah, Creative New Zealand were a bit like that in that they, they wanted to know you had a track record that you were a serious artist. That's about all they want to know, mm. from what I could gather. Um, and then it's it's going to be personal taste. It's got to be. Uh, the people who decide 
um, are not going to be purely objective. Uh, people are not. Yeah. It's as simple as that. No, of course not. Um, they'll agree that they... I mean, for myself, I mean, I don't even need to like um, a certain artist's work to appreciate how good it is. So there is that, and hopefully the people that make those decisions uh, can see outside their own taste and say, well, this guy's worked really, really, really hard, and he is an important artist. The fact that I don't like it isn't really a, a thing. Yes, of course. We yeah. all, I believe, w would want work to flourish if it's worthwhile work. Mm. We don't... It's, it's sometimes, you know, how people... Everybody's got an opinion about music, modern music or oh, pop yeah. music, and people yeah. will say, so-and-so shit. Or mm. something, and you go, no, they're really, really, really good. It's just that you don't like them. Yeah, I can think of a uh, probably the most famous New Zealand band. I really, really admire their work, mm. but I can't listen to it. Yeah, that's, but that's me. Yeah, of course. That's yeah. A, again. It's maybe I was wrong. It's taking the blame. Mm. But, um, I think people choose to be offended by things and I don't like certain music it's bad which yeah. isn't the case it also it's a, it's a kind of self aggrandizement thing isn't it like mm. I'm, a, I'm a big um, yeah so they'll they'll pick <clears throat> something perhaps a little bit offbeat mm. to show that they've got kind of interesting tastes <laughs> you know yeah. uh, I mean we're all like that you know yeah, I'm not yeah. knocking other people but, yeah. but I've learned especially since I a while ago I decided to start learning how to play the guitar mm -hmm. And I realised what separated me from people who can actually do it. Mm. And I thought, right, so there's a bunch of artists out there that I don't personally like, mm. but first up, they really know how to do it. Yeah. You know, and yeah. that's the same with visual art that I, I don't understand or don't mm. connect with. Yeah. And as I say, you don't need to necessarily understand it. Oscar Wilde said... If you understand a piece of uh, a work of art, it's dead to you. Yeah. Um, and he also said on his deathbed, either that wallpaper goes or I do, but yeah. that's beside the point. No, it's a great line, isn't it? <laughs> it's one, one of us will have to go. <laughs> oh, was that it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good old Oscar. Uh, Harry, I've got to tell a few people what else is going on. Uh, in the wider upper, mm -hmm. so I better get on to that soon. Okay. But in the meantime, there's your gallery. It's called Watson the, Gallery. The Watson Gallery, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, it'll get so well known and so famous that people will just um, shorten it to the Watson. Yeah. Are you going up to the Watson today? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yeah, I've. Yeah. I know. Well, I really do hope uh, people. You get a bit of foot traffic. Uh, no, not really. No. I think it's a great filter, though. The people that do come up are genuinely interested. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know that I'd enjoy a gallery on on street level where people wandered in while they're waiting for their wife to choose a mattress. I know what you mean. Yeah. When we were on street level, uh, the radio station, I mean, mm. it, it was good because they, it's good that we needed to be accessible. Yeah. But just occasionally somebody would come, they wouldn't even look at us, and they'd be going like uh, this, you right, know, and I'd say, yeah. can I help you? And they'd say, no, just looking. <laughs> <laughs> We're yeah. a radio station. Yeah, We're not yeah. selling frocks. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right, so you don't want you don't want masses of people there mm. but you do want some people to turn yeah. up it's a great place it's a little shrine <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i try and emulate peter mcclevey mm. because i grew up, i actually grew up being taken to his shows uh, on a regular basis mm. so i can't help but deal a bit like that be a bit like that well that's a really good model yeah you know, peter yeah. mcclevey very important in the art world yeah Mm. Harry, thanks a lot, um, and I hope people uh, do come and, and see that, that what you've got in there at the moment, because I, I thought, right, I could spend a lot of time here. That's yeah, great. yeah. I, I, the idea is to give people an experience when they come up. Um, the great thing about, a, well, a really decent integral dealer gallery should have a, a streak of, um, a non-commercial streak, mm. whereas we're all here for this, we're all here for the art. Yeah. This is why we're here. This no, there isn't really another reason. If if the gallery succeeds and makes money, that's a side effect. Great.
I'm going to play another bit of music off the Luaka Bop CD and look God, with my eyesight I find it really difficult to read but I'm going to play oh, I've already done that one um, oh. Sweet Melody why not we all like Sweet Melodies we do, we do. it's uh, track 11 we all like 11 yeah. <laughs> all right Harry thank yep. you thank you See that you. was a lovely talk about motorcycles it wasn't it yeah, yeah. so uh, all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 riding a parallel twin 1200 Bonneville at the moment. A Bonneville. Yeah. Right. A Triumph Bonneville. Yeah. I used to have. A, I've had a Triumph Daytona and a Triumph Trident. Ah. We should do this conversation again. Yeah. Well, we've we got should. plenty to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Now you're talking. <laughs> yeah. I used to have a Yamaha um, 750 V-shaped twin, which I rather liked. Ah, oh, beaut. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a number of a number of bikes. The Trident was the one uh, that you'd, you'd lean into a corner and it would kind of laugh at you. Like, <laughs> oh, come on, you can lean further than uh, yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's great, Harry. Okay. okay thank uh, you very much, Michael. See you later. See ya. <laughs> A sweet melody hey i'm gonna have to i just enjoyed talking with, with harry so much that i'm running out of time and i've got thor and williams video that i want to play you soon so let's just have a quick whip through of what's going on in the wider upper well as you know matariki coming up and um uh, there's an exhibition at Aratoi. It's uh because wider upper as you know is on the verge of becoming a dark sky reserve 
Um, so they're celebrating Matariki with astrophotography. Six Wellington and a Wairarapa-based artist show the power and beauty of the night from their own perspectives. Uh, Glenn Butler, Sharice Eberline, Mark Gee, um, Rebecca Kempton, Pete Monk, and John Whitby on at Aratoa at the moment. Uh, the markets are on as usual. Be a bit cold, but rug up, it's worth it. Um, Steve Carlin's going to be on uh, Fridays at the White Swan, baritone, deep, rich voice. Um, Stonehenge Aotearoa are running a telescope course, right? So they've partnered with Milky Way Kiwi to bring you a comprehensive and informative experience. Come and learn from two experienced amateur astronomers who've been operating telescopes collectively for 40 years. So Saturday from 2 to 6 and one session of stargazing at night. So get in touch with uh, Stonehenge Aratoi. Oh, Sunday, Wairarapa United men are uh, playing Petoni. This is football, of course, at Trust House Memorial Park. I think there's a good chance I'll be there. Two o'clock till four. Go to that. It's only $5 for adults, uh, $2 for students and children. And if you're under five, nothing. Presumably you're with somebody else. Uh, Wired up a word, Don Farr at the uh, Carterton Community Courthouse, 60 Holloway Street. You know where that is, right next to the event centre. Um, on Sunday, did I say three o'clock? I am now. There's a winter reading challenge for adults happening at the Tararua District Library in Danneberg. Um Check out with the library, but uh, Monday from 9 till 5, all day, and I think it continues, uh, they, they issue a challenge, um, and there are weekly prize draws for those who've completed a challenge in that week, and there's a grand prize for those who have completed seven challenges. So it's every day, right? Exciting stuff. Um... Oh, oh! There's the uh, the Coco Dessert Bar Mums and Bubs Monday Swap Market in the park. So what it is is they're trying to raise money to save unwanted mums and bubs goods going to the landfill, right? You know, so instead of chucking stuff away, donate it. So there'll be swap with your clothing, toys and books, and you meet new mums and things and enjoy oh, coffee and cakes and stuff. So this is at QE2 Park uh, on Monday, 10 till 1. Might be a bit cold, but I'm sure that there'll be somewhere to hunker down, meet, uh, swap your clothing and your items, bassinets and stuff, and enjoy eating and drinking together and just being convivial. Right, now I promised you that I would play uh, a video that uh, Thorin from Wycol has done. He was, this was all to do with the 40-hour challenge. Um, the 40-hour famine, you know, uh, where, where lots of people, in order to show solidarity with people who are actually starving and raise money for them, then they uh, fast for 40 hours. Thorin in addition to that, decided he would write and record a music track. So let's check that out. Um. All right, it's time to start working on the famine song. As some of you may know, the 40-hour famine in New Zealand is a fundraising event that schools can participate in, where you spend 40 hours either giving up something or setting yourself a challenge. So. I set myself the challenge of writing a song in 40 hours. And now it's a few days after the famine. So the song has been recorded and mixed by me over the few days that I've had. And I thought I'd just explain some of the stuff. So this isn't a normal song that I would write. I put on my famine fundraising page that you could donate to have certain features put in the song. So for example, words or lyrics or styles or time signatures. So I got a few requests, uh, a couple of which being Eureka and Gherkins. And well, I had to put them in there. So there are a few interesting lyrics, but that's why 
that interesting because some people donated and that's the words that they chose. And I also got a request for three, four time to be in there and also some reggae, which I did my best to pull off. I really enjoyed making this song. It was something that I'm not really used to, it was something a bit different, and it was a challenge to be able to record it all in 40 hours. If you do want to donate, you're still able to. The fundraising page is still up, so I'll put a link in the description of this video. And if you enjoyed the song, then pop on over. It's for a good cause. Without further ado, here it is.
that <laughs> that was fantastic. I loved it. <laughs> Such a nice looking guy, and he did that thrash metal voice. And yes, I picked out the three four time. Quite a lot of it. I was just thinking there might be a tiny bit of three four time, but there was heaps and a good little reggae section in the middle of that. How creative and for such a good cause. Good on you, Thorin. All right. I'm out of here. See you later.